that it is the end of March already and the 1st of April. I am filming this video on April Fool's Day <laughs> um, because I have had a really, really busy couple of weeks and um, this week in particular was really, really busy. I think it, I've had about a week of not even touching my colouring stuff because everything has been so hectic for us lately and um, as always it just ebbs and flows in the coloring world so um, I've got quite a bit done for March and I am really pleased with quite a few of the pictures that I've done here although I would have liked to have done a bit more it hasn't been com a completely slow month for which I am very very grateful of now I have um, in my journal kept track of everything that I've been doing um, and I'm going to show you all the things that I've done so let me just clear all these beautiful books out of the way and I'm going to show you how I've done in my journal and then I'm going to show you my whips and end with my completed pages so um, I didn't really stick to everything I had planned for videos um, I did do quite a few but there's a few videos that I didn't do and I haven't come been able to edit as many as I would like so I'm a bit behind in the Sugar Plum Fairy. I've got one more part I need to edit and publish onto the channel. And then there have been one or two lives that I haven't been able to do. Um, the nature of our family life and, and just what's been happening with our children. I haven't had many Saturdays available to do live streaming either. However, um, I have done well on in videoing perspectives. So... I have finally finished my Rock Hopper Penguins video. I finished the Berry Girl, um, which was really, really great. I, I finished that, I edited it, I published it. I showed you my creative journal and I did the Get to Know Me video, which quite a few of you really did enjoy. I'm almost finished editing Sugar Plum video. I need to still edit the Mysteria picture with um, the Crow which I've got a whole lot of videos for that. And then I had filmed the coloring books that I want to finish, but then I didn't like the way it had come out. So I need to redo that. So um, I've done quite a few videos and I've still got some progress to make, but all in all, it's been really, really good. So if I flip over to my completed pages and the whips and all of that. so. As far as whips go, I've got quite a few, um, but as you all know by now, I tend to still just have whips. I think I just have to embrace it. It's just part of who I am. I am a person of many whips. <laughs> all right, so Circle of Life by Mel Pamini, Chapter Panaguti. I've got this page here which I started on with you um, and I just filmed one section of the mandala because it's pretty repetitive and as you can see I've made some progress but I must confess I'm finding it really really boring to color um, so I lose the inspiration to finish the page I do need to finish it because I am doing this page for the coloring checklist challenge um, color and chat with Sammy put up on her channel so I do need to finish this for the challenge um, and that's the only thing that's actually motivating me to finish it otherwise to be quite honest and quite frank I would be very happy to put this page away and never see it or touch it again <laughs> because it's just not inspirational and I lose interest However, I have really enjoyed testing the different pencils on this paper and I found that Prismacolor and in, interestingly enough, the Black Widows probably are my favorite on this paper. Um, the Castle Arts I can still color relatively okay with as well. So I'm quite happy with those. Polychromos were um, 
also pretty good so I think that the paper suits quite um, a variety of pencils especially when it comes to small details there's no not enough room to really layer up and see any poor blending so to speak so there's a, a lot more grace with the type of pencils to use so that is um, my current whip which I'm hoping to finish in April because I do want to get it out of the way so that is Circle of Life by Mel Pamini Chats Panagati then I have Main Race Dutch Asian by Rita Berman now in here um, I had started a live stream video where I wanted to show you how I was going about watercolor backgrounds and how I was um, some of the things I've picked up watching watercolor artists use their watercolors um, but in the process my paper got really really wet and I had to pause that project and go on to a different one so um, we decided to hop in and color this page together um, Kali was coloring the page on the live anyway and she suggested it. so thank you very much Kali um, it's been lovely to be able to color this and I really am enjoying the blue I'm a bit lost as to what to do on the background um, so this page I'm hoping to complete in our next live stream video as well as carry on with that watercolor background I was telling you about so the plan is to do the embellishments on the vase in gold. I need to finish these leaves in green. And then I'm going to do these sticks in sort of brown. And then I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the background. I am feeling quite lost. I might take um, a yellow chalk pastel actually and just dust it with yellow to con which will tie in with the gold and also just complement the colors that we've got going here and then I might take a gel pen and go over the crosses with a gel pen um, but we'll see how it goes so that's a bit of a rough plan there so that is my whip in Rita Berman Rita, yeah Rita Berman's Men Race Dutch Asian or my travel through Asia I then hopped into Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson just going to bring it out a little bit more and I returned to some old whips in here. Now, these are whips I started quite a few years ago, so about two years ago. And my choice of colors has been quite in, uninspiring now. Um, but I have tried to come back to it and carry on working and, and work completing the page. So I finished the bug. Um, I did the ribbons here and I've been working on a bit more of the flowers now there's not much I can really do with some of these flowers because I've already um, burnished the paper so there's not much wiggle room to really improve them and then to contrast the colors I've been using these greens which is um, a yellow chartreuse a grass green and a dark green um, and then I've got these grey leaves, which I think are really, they do work well with the red background, but I struggle because in my brain I want to keep them green, um, the way I see in, in nature. So I am forcing myself quite a lot out of my comfort zone with this page, and the background is oil paint, which I really, really do like. Um, I'm just not sure I chose the best of colors um, so the color scheme is is kind of like not really ticking it for me but you know live and learn it's it's not the worst one so that's one of them and then the other whip I came back to is this one now it's really shiny oh my gosh I had this absolute and I don't even know what <laughs> came over me. I decided I wanted to see what gold foil on a page would look like um, if I did something bigger than chains or details. I wanted to make the main object with gold foil. So I, I did. I put in a lot of gold foil. And I'm having to come and do the purple leaves. 
and that idea was to um, do the opposite so where I would normally color the flowers uh, color and then the leaves would be green I decided to flip it and do the flowers green and the leaves um, the different colors so I did gel pen along the around the um, the gold foil and I did a bit of silver pencil work on the, around here um, and then I decided I was mad and didn't know what I was doing because I, maybe I shouldn't have done the gel pen so I'm trying to connect the colors now together and went for purple leaves and I need to finish quite a few things so it's almost done but then my one son said to me that he feels the background it doesn't work because the gold gets lost so he suggested a blue background now the only thing I can do really is um, paint it with acrylic blue and then take white paint and splotch white paint over it to just create something different so um, I still need to now change the background because the gold on the the background is not working he is right it is getting lost um, so that might help to make it look a bit better the other problem I've had with doing so much gold foil is um, the glare in my eyes with the light but also I've gone if I just try lift it away from the, the light it's kind of creeped over onto bits of the actual image so a lot of the fine line art is is a bit lost and it's making it quite difficult to see where is stem where is leaves um, that sort of thing so um, I think it lacks a lot of finesse so to speak but then on the other hand I did an experiment because I wanted to see what it would look like and now I know that it I don't think it's a really good idea um, and this book in Magical Dawn um, it has really been a book where I can go in and experiment with different things and try different techniques um, because I really honestly feel I need at least one book where I can try different things and so Magical Dawn has become almost a journal of my coloring journey. It's got from when I first started coloring in 2020 to what I do now it's got uh, my experiments like this background here was uh, stained with tea and then I went over it with eyeshadow and I've gone and put gold foil and now I'm going to go over it all with acrylic paint um, so I've really I've done paint pens in here I've done gel pens and I'm really experimenting and trying different things so um, at some point I might buy Magical Dawn again and approach it like I do most of my other books with the intention of coloring really beautiful pages and giving it my best um, but I also am enjoying the freedom of experimenting in this book and trying different things practicing techniques and and sort of letting it be a journal of my coloring journey so those are my two whips in here and um, the other whip which is the live stream whip is this one now as you can see the background has dried really really beautifully and I suppose in some ways you could say that this background is done but I don't want to stop right here I want to bring in more paint so I want to darken up the edges and um, blend it out a bit more I need a bit more brighter blue um, and just blend this out some more so I'm not ready to say goodbye to it um, and I've also been watching and learning that when it comes to watercolor paint you do need to put a layer let it dry completely then put more then let that dry completely so um, I'm also wanting to practice that technique and see how it ends now on this side you can see I've had bleed through quite badly um, I also didn't put a page to protect this page so I'm going to have that to deal with as well but I mean this is a crown page I don't really care for crown pages so it's not the end of the world um, but on the other hand I think this page is going to turn out really really beautiful so those are my whips in Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson 
Now, for the um, amazing, my some of my proud pride and joy. I've done, had some pages this month that I have been so so pleased with. So, the first one I'm going to show you is a PDF in a way. So I copied it out of a coloring book, and it is this one, and I am beyond pleased with myself like I am so so proud of myself I'm going to bring up here the photo I used to help me with the background for Captain America so in the coloring checklist challenge I had picked the options to well the challenges to color a cute page to color a page with thick lines and to color a superhero so my superhero is Captain America, my cute page is a Lego page, and it's got thick lines. I mean, the lines in here are really, really thick, as you can see. I didn't even white it out. Um, and I copied this onto Dalarone mixed media paper, which I had with me. It's either that or it's um, Vellum Bristol. I can't really remember. Um, and it worked so beautifully with Ohuhu markers. I, I was able to blend markers and the way I've envisioned and understood that you could blend markers. So um, I, what I did is I went onto, Go onto Google. I found Captain America Lego pictures and I found one that really kind of was the same stance and I used that as a reference. And I used Ohuhu markers on the entire um lego figure and i am beyond pleased with myself i uh, i think he's come out amazing um when i sh i couldn't wait to show my kids the next morning because i was so pleased with myself and we've agreed that this is going to be the first picture that i actually frame because of the way he's turned out so um for the background watercolor paints and again i i try to layer up my watercolor paints now this is sort of the effect that i want to go for in the magical dawn page i just showed you um, so basically i'm coming in with light layers and let it dry then i go over it again with more um, watercolor and let that dry until it's um, at the depth of color that i'm looking for um, and then I went over it with white uh, watered down acrylic paint just to soften it so it creates a smoky kind of like look to it. So I am very, very pleased with myself. I think he's amazing. And especially because I don't color in much with um, alcohol markers, um, I, I found actually if I'm going to color again with alcohol markers, I'm probably going to copy the image onto this paper again because or even go and buy myself alcohol marker paper because of how much um, how much easier it was to actually blend the markers and create those uh, tones that I wanted. So yeah, that is my pride and joy of the month um, for you. I don't know the author, the illustrator. It's an image from the Lego Superheroes coloring book. Um, and that's about, it's basically all I know. Right, so the next one is in Crystal Vogel's A Small Race. And here I did one page with Distress Inks, Polychromos Pencils, some Prismacolor, and a little bit of Spectrum Noir Sparkle. So the Mushroom the flowers here and the mice were done with polychromos the girl was done i think with prismacolor and the top part of the mushroom was done with prismacolor and as you can see i've got sparkles on the snail and the mushroom not much anywhere else and then distress inks in the background and white sakura jelly roll for the dots on the mushroom so again i found um the paper worked well with prisma colors and 
polychromos. I didn't have any issues with either of them. I do find I can still get better color with Prisma colors than with polys. Um, however, it was still a beautiful, um, it was still a really enjoyable experience to color with polys on this paper. So I will happily use polys and Prismas going forward. So that is what I've done in Crystal Vogel's A Small Race. Next is Gnomes in the Neighborhood by Denise Kletz. I'm just going to zoom you out. And we did this page together. Um, and it's our gnome and mermaid. So our gnome is having a nice old nap in, and bobbing along in the ocean. And we've got our mermaid very curious and coming to have, it, have a look. So I use Neo Color 2s for the water, watercolor paint for the sky. Um, I found it didn't really blend out very well. So um, I prefer Neo Color 2s on this paper than the watercolor paint. And then I use Castle Arts for the rest of the picture, some glitter some Spectrum Noir and some gel pens and then a whole lot of um, acrylic paint to create the bubbles and on his glasses I use pearl colors to give his glasses that sheen so oh yeah again I'm very very pleased with how it's turned out and I'm happy to say that I find with Denise Klett's draw illustrations and coloring books um, to approach them with a more light-hearted and whimsical approach instead of a details and perfection actually worked out much better for me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to coloring in this book again. So that is what I've done in Gnomes in the Neighborhood by Denise Kletz. Next up is Tales from the Forest Kingdom by Hannah Carlson. Now in here... I just finished a whip and it is our berry girl. So as you can see, she's come out really, really lovely. I love everything about her. Um, I'm very, very pleased with how she's turned out. There is a little bit of sparkle pin on the leaves. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I'm not sure it's picking up. But I did put some Spectrum Noir Sparkle on the, on the leaves and in her eyes. Maybe you can see in her eyes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really thoroughly enjoyed coloring her. And I find it was very inspiring. So I'm looking forward to doing another page in this book. Um, I do find Tales from the Forest Kingdom is a really really beautiful book and I want to keep coming back to it so yeah it's probably up there in my top 10 books for 2023 so far so that is what I've done in Tales from the Forest Kingdom. And then as a surprise because I've had one whip in Fragile World which I finally completed and I've done a video for you and it is the rock hopper penguins now again i use an intense base on the rocks and i use prisma colors to go over it i use chalk pastels in the background and i absolutely enjoyed coloring this book this page I found I just find them easy I really do and I find I don't have to be as pedantic about burnishing so in here you can see some of the whites or the tooth of the paper but I left it because I felt that it gave the feathers of the penguins a bit more of a realistic feel to it so, instead of a smooth feel so I actually felt that it worked from a texture perspective so I have still got to edit all these videos, but they will be up on the channel as soon as I can. I've almost finished editing the second part um, and then I need to edit the final part and then it's up. So stay tuned. That will be released in April and you can color along with me. 
So that is what I've done in Kirby Rosanna's Fragile World. And finally, but certainly not least, in Fairy and Fantasy 2 by Christine Karen, I have done this page. Now, I didn't do a video on this page because I was just really inspired and wanted to sit down and just color something without worrying about camera and tripod. So I just went ahead and colored her and I used Prisma color pencils. The moon has got pearl color effects on it, which is why it's got that sheen. And I think I used pencils for the background and then I splattered diluted acrylic paint onto the background. But I really love the color palette. I, I think the blue and the yellow really, really work well. I had to bring in a bit of green for the leaves and then I tied it in with the belt and the green headbands. But other than that, I think she's lovely. So that is the Midnight Enchantress in Christine Karen's Fairy and Fantasy 2. Well, that is everything that I have done this month in all my coloring. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the comments your thoughts, um, any color alongs you would like. And I will see what I can arrange. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until next time, everyone, please do like, subscribe, comment below as it does help to support my channel. The YouTube algorithms do pick up on um, any activity and then they, but they help boost the channel um, so that different people and can find me and all of that. So um, if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, everyone, happy coloring and take care. Bye for now.